Hey there guys, this is John from Clean Code Cast, and welcome to my YouTube tutorials. Welcome back to another Kotlin with KTOR video. In today's video, we will be introducing GraphQL to the project. By adding GraphQL, you are able to create a single endpoint that can query the database, whether it is fetching, inserting, or updating rows, even allowing the client side to request data exactly how it needs. All right, let's get started. To continue on, we can now switch to our browser, open up a new tab, and we're gonna go to kgraphql.in, and we can visit the documentation page, choose getting started, and now we can see the dependency that we need to bring in. So we can copy this, move back to the project, Open up the build.gradle.kts file and at the bottom of dependencies, add implementation, double quotes, paste that in, and now we need to get the kgraphql version. So we can start by deleting that, go back to the documentation, and you'll see at the top it's 0.11.0. .0. So we'll just add that in and save it. Now that we've implemented that, we can switch back to the documentation in the browser. We can now scroll on Tutorials, Star Wars Tutorial, and you can see that they've created a data class human, droid. We're not going to follow this. Uh, we're just going to kind of get the gist of what's happening here. We already have, if you open up the app.kt file, you can already see we have a data class for a user. Uh, the interface character is not needed because we're not going to create a different type of user for this example. So we can go ahead and scroll down. This is what we want. So it looks like we need to create the schema, add a query for our user with the resolver, and then scroll down and you can see you call execute on a string. And this is what the data returns. So let's get started. Let's first find the schema code. Okay, so kgraphql schema. So we can go back to app.kt file and we can import com a peer base kgraphql and then uh, star. We can now scroll down and below the database instantiation, we're going to add a new line. We're going to say val schema equals kgraphql.schema. And in here we'll say query heroes, open the function, and we'll say resolver open a function, uh, take in no params, and here we'll say transaction, users, select all, map, users to user, iterator, and that's it. So now if you look down, pretty much doing this exact same thing, except now we have to give it a route. The difference between what we have here and what we're going to implement with the GraphQL is you only need one route to transact to get data that you need, assuming you've created the query and the resolver for it. So inside routing, let's add a GraphQL route. Get with no params. Then we'll say val graph quest all eve and in here we want to create a data class type that the json can serialize so we'll say graphql request and we'll go up to the top we'll just add that below user data class 
graph ql quest val query and it's a string scroll back down and now that we have that pulling in we can do call respond and we'll say ema execute graph quest query now let's go back to the terminal and let's run the project and for this testing example I recommend getting something that has a GraphQL support. It's much easier to type it all out instead of using curl and passing in special options with strings. Um, in this case, I'm going to use Postman. If you have one that you'd like, go ahead and use it. If not, go ahead and download Postman and then you can follow along with me. So, with the server running, I'm going to switch over to my installation of Postman and then a new tab. Leave it as a git request and we'll go to http localhost 8080 forward slash graphql. And then down in body, you can choose this graphql option. So we started out with query, open and close curly braces, and the name of the route is heroes, open and close curly braces. Now, what data do we want? From that table you want the ID the name and the page now you can go over and click send you'll see that the data returns heroes ID name the same as before except this is one endpoint say we don't want the ID we just remove ID comma hit send and now you see our euro our heroes with no ID return it's pretty neat but what if we only wanted one hero? Well, let's switch back to the code. And in the schema where we declared the query heroes, we can declare query hero. And we can say resolver. And in this case, this one's going to take an ID of int as a param. Then we can say transaction. And we can say users select users.id eq id users to user passing in the iterator just as we did in the endpoint where we took in a specific id param that was it so let's switch back to the terminal stop our project run it again Switch back to Postman or whichever one you're using for your GraphQLs. Just to test that it's working still. It's still returning the same thing as before. So this time, instead of heroes, pass hero, open and close parentheses, id equals 1. Just so you can see that it is the right id, we'll add that back into the fields to query. Click send. And you'll see it returned one hero with an ID of one. And if we wanted to change that, we could try three. And that's it. Pretty neat. But what if we wanted to update, say, the age of one of our heroes? Well, let's switch back to the code. And inside the schema, let's add mutation. And we're going to name this update hero. Then we're going to say resolver, and we're going to take in an ID of an int, and a age of int. Do a transaction inside of there. Now we can say users dot update, and we'll go by the users dot ID e, and then inside of there say it users age equals age then we can go ahead and save that all right so that's it for the code side let's go back to the terminal stop the project if you have it currently running and rerun it after it's running switch back to the postman 
or whatever tool you chose to do your GraphQL queries. So we can run this again to verify it's still working. Now let's comment out query and in a new line below add mutation update hero ID3 age 44 and we can run that the data update hero and one representing that the row was updated now comment out mutation go ahead and uncomment out query and let's rerun it for id3 the one we updated if this worked we should see the age return back as 44 now instead of what we had previously we see data hero ID3 Jill age 44. Now you can try it one more time just to verify that it is working and we'll say 24. Comment out mutation, bring the query back in. And we, now we should see 3 Jill 24. 3 Jill 24. So as you can see, it now works. That's going to go ahead and wrap up the implementation of GraphQL in this video. To reiterate, we implemented a GraphQL, we created a schema, added two queries, and a mutation for getting all the heroes, getting a specific hero by ID, and updating a hero by ID and their age. If you liked this video and want to see more, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also, if you have any requests, go ahead and leave a comment requesting something that you would like to see or if you just wanted to say hi. And once again, this is John from Clean Codecast signing off.